Hey all, today we're gonna to talk about the Diplomat Magnum Demo Orange. And yes, that is a mouthful and I did have to rehearse that. But yeah, we're gonna be talking about this pen. I'll be unboxing it and you'll be able to see my first impressions of this pen and kind of experience it along with me. And yeah, I've already unboxed it, I know, but we're gonna go back in time in a second and uh, you can see it along with me for the first time. But before we do that, I just wanna say I will be doing more videos of this pen in the future to show you how it holds up over time, what it's like to use it over time, is it reliable, all that kind of stuff. So if that interests you, please subscribe. But other than that, let's just get right into it. All right, let's do this. Okay, so I went Goulet this time. So here's our pen. We'll look at that in a second. That is a pretty sick sticker. And if you've seen uh, my other videos, you know I love stickers. And Goulet does a good job with those. Um, I also got some ink samples that I'm pretty excited about, and I will show those to you in other videos. I plan to do reviews of these different inks. So I've got Roar and Klinger, however you say that. Helianthus, got Diatramentis Document Ink Fuchsia, I've got Robert Oster Citrus, and Platinum Citrus Black. So I'll be doing videos of those at some point, but we're not here for the ink, we're here for this guy. So let's pull it out. Okay, cool. So it came with a converter. I don't think all pen stores are including a converter, but Goulet is. So check on that before you buy if you want to get a converter with it. Okay, now here's the pen, the Diplomat Magnum Demo Orange actually has a pretty good feel to it. I was worried that it was just gonna feel completely light and cheap, but it feels pretty good. I mean, of course, I just barely grabbed it, so we'll see. Okay, so let's talk about the material. It feels pretty solid, honestly. Everyone talks about it being a really light pen, and it definitely is light, but it feels like pretty solid plastic. Let's unscrew this here. The Threads are pretty rough, but maybe they'll, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna break in a little bit and be nice. Okay, people online talked about how narrow this grip section is, and it is quite narrow. I don't know if I have any other pens that are that narrow, but it doesn't feel bad to me. I actually kind of like that. Okay, so let's talk about some of the parts of this pen here. So we've got our clip, very nice and shiny. It says Diplomat on it, and it's very springy, very easy to flex that out, which is nice, it makes it nice and usable. It's kind of a unique clip, at least in my collection, it's just a flat piece of metal. Um, most of mine are something more along the lines of this, where it's got more of a three-dimensional shape to it. Um, so the clip is interesting. I like this frosted orange translucent look that it has. Um, the finial has a nice, little logo on there. It's different than the old Magnum logo. Um, and I, I think this is a huge step up. That looks really nice. Also, I waited for a long time to get a Magnum because I really did not like the look of the opaque ones. The colors looked weird. I think the colors in person were better than they looked online, but it just kind of looked like some kind of weird ballpoint, especially with the black finial thing up here. It looked like it was a a click ballpoint thing and just didn't look that great. So I think I like this more uniform color a lot better. So I mentioned that the, the grip section is fairly narrow. It really, really is. Um, but depending on your preference, you may or may not like that. For comparison's sake, let's pull this Metropolitan out again because Metropolitans are fairly narrow. Um, it still feels girthier than 
this one. And part of that is these um, facets. There's a facet on either side of the nib and then on the bottom as well. Yeah, so you can see there, fairly similar, but the facets make it feel narrower. And also, for sake of comparison, I've got Lamy Safari here, and you can see, hopefully you can see this, um, the, the triangular grip is pretty slight on the Magnum. It's very dramatic on the, the Lamy Safari. So I don't hate the grip on the Lamy Safari, but it does give me trouble sometimes. So I feel like this is more comfortable for me. Um, so if you don't like this, you might like this better. Let's talk about the nib here. Um, it's a nice looking nib. It's got these little lines engraved into it. It says Diplomat Magnum. This is a fine. And actually the main reason I wanted to try this pen is because of the nib. I've heard really good things. I've heard these nibs are quite soft compared to your normal steel nib. I haven't really had much experience with soft nibs. My really only experience has been with my Noodler's Ahab, which I don't really like. I don't find that pen to be very reliable, but I do like how the Flex nib makes normal writing feel springy. This is definitely not a Flex nib, but I'm hoping to feel some of that springiness it feels like you've got a suspension system in your pen that just makes writing maybe a little bit more comfortable. I think on the opaque magnums, this little collar band is plastic. And so I'm wondering if this one is also plastic, but just kind of chrome painted or something. I can't really tell. Um, either way, it looks really good. Um, another thing I heard online that they are transitioning their nibs from a matte look to a gloss look. And I, I guess I got one of the matte ones. It doesn't look terribly matte finished to me. It's still very shiny, of course. Um, but it's different from like, here's my Twisby swipe here. Um, when you get a Twisby pen, it's like looking in a mirror almost. It's just very reflective and shiny. And this is just a little bit more muted. So I kind of like that. Um, comes with an empty uh, cartridge. Wow, there's not even a, a back on that. Just empty there. It's just a placeholder to keep this guy from popping. So we've got that we could use if we wanted to. Um, I'll be filling it with this. Let's slide that in there. Oh, wow, that fits really securely. Holy cow. Okay, let's see how that looks. Yeah, it looks pretty good. One thing I find a little bit strange about this pen is the ink windows. Um, it's cool to have ink windows. It's a little redundant in a demonstrator version. I feel about this kind of like I do about the Lamy Vista. It kind of bugs me that the Lamy Vista has the ink windows. I know it's basically just a clear safari, but it's weird to have ink windows and a clear pen. But with this one, since it's you've got this color here, it still looks kind of cool to have these completely clear sections. So I don't mind it as much as I do with the Lamy Vista. One thing I find a little bit weird about Lamy Safaris and the Vista is that the ink window and grip sections are not perfectly lined up. They're a little bit crooked. Um, it's hard to notice. Seems more noticeable in this pen, the way the threading lines up on the body and the grip section means that the pen tightens with the ink window offset from the grip, which is really weird. Okay, let's fill her up and see how it writes. And then I'll do a size comparison with some other pens and we should be good to go. So I've got this ink sample. I actually didn't buy this ink sample. This is a sample that a friend gave me. And this is Irushizuko Kanpeki. So I figured I'd use this because I've used a bunch of orange inks before, but I don't think I have any that match this orange very well. 
And as cool as it is to have similar colors uh, that match your pen, I actually really like high contrast with my pen and ink sometimes. So we're gonna put a really vibrant blue in this very vibrant orange pen and see how that goes. Also, it's just a really well-behaved ink, so it should give us a pretty decent idea of how this pen writes. Okay, I will say, I don't know what brand this converter is. I don't know if it's Diplomat or if Goulet just threw in some kind of stock converter they have. Um, this feels kind of cheap uh, compared to other converters. So you may want to buy another converter anyway, depending on your preference. If you don't mind kind of a cheap feeling converter, then this is okay. Um, I appreciate the free converter one way or another. All right. Certainly fills very easily. Got a nice full fill there. That's good to see. Always bugs me when you can't get the ink pretty close to the, the piston. If it's somewhere down here after you've pumped it a couple times, that just doesn't make sense to me. All right, let's wipe that off. And let's close this sample bottle before I spill it everywhere. Okay, so screw that back on there. Oh yeah, that's already really nice. Those threads have already kind of gotten out, uh, got rid of their little, I don't know. It just feels a lot better, super smooth now. I can even just like <laughs> almost tighten it with one flick of my fingers. Okay, so. Get some paper here. I've got a tester page in my notebook. Um, so a lot of reviewers use Rhodia.grid. Um, great paper. This is Claire Fontaine. Um, they behave similarly. I like Rhodia and I like Claire Fontaine. So if you're familiar with Rhodia, this is fairly similar. Um, I think Rhodia tends to be, well, it depends on what you get, but the, the dot pad stuff is 80 gram, this is 90 gram, but I don't think that makes a terribly huge difference. They're both really smooth, very fountain pen friendly. So yeah, let's give this a shot. Actually, I think I have a better tester page in the back here. There we go, there's a little more room. Okay, uh, let's see. Had a hard time with that Z there. Okay, let's try some cursive, and I'm rusty on cursive. Sorry, guys. Wow, okay. Um, yeah, it's interesting. It actually feels fairly stiff to me. Something along the lines of a Twisby. Um, Twisby and Diplomat both use Yovo nibs, although they are finished differently, so they, they're not quite the same, but um, it feels a little bit similar to that for me. Um, I'm not really detecting any kind of bounciness, but you can see here there's a lot of inconsistency in how it's writing almost like some skipping or something. I don't know if that's just because I didn't rinse it out before I started using it or what. Um, it's definitely juicy. Um, it's putting down a nice line and, oh wow, yeah, I can definitely flex it pretty easily there. So, um, yeah, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it. I'm getting a little bit of variation there. So that's cool. My guess is that as I use this, it's gonna break in a little bit and I won't have these kinds of issues. I'll take a look at it under 
um, my loop and make sure that the tines are aligned. I'll flush it out. Um, but my hope is that any of this kind of stuff will clear up and I'll try to do a video update on that later so that you know if I got that fixed or not. But it seems like the, the cross strokes struggle at this point. Quite consistently they struggle and the downstrokes are amazing. So don't quite know what that's about, but I will look into it and try to figure that out. Um, yeah, so really quick, let's pull some other pens in here and do a comparison for size and also just talk about how it compares as far as the feel of the pen as well. So I've got this one here. We'll put some slightly lower tier pens here. I don't know if lower tier is right, lower cost, and slightly higher. Okay, so this is a pretty good spectrum, I guess, of price and different things. You've got about $10 down here and about 30 up here. Um, so this one's kind of in the middle somewhere. So yeah, that gives you some idea of the size too. Um, so it's not a terribly big pen. It's not terribly wide compared to the Eco. It's a bit thinner um, and a bit shorter as well. Um, let's look at this one here. Yeah, so kind of a short pen, I guess. Um, short and narrow, but um, it doesn't feel, the body doesn't feel super narrow, even if it is slightly narrower. Let's see how it posts. I kind of forgot about that. Posts well, a little bit weird. Um, like it doesn't post very deep. Um, it goes onto this tapered part and then just kind of stops. So it's not as secure as uh, Lamy Safari or Twisby Swipe that go on a little deeper, um, but it still posts okay. Um, I don't think it's going to fly off while I'm writing. I wouldn't want to wave it around or anything, but uh, for what it is, I think it's fine. It'll function fine. So I also want to say with these pens here that I've got, um, all entry level stuff, I'd say this is a. Mm, I don't know, it's really hard to like compare and say which one is better. It's all really subjective and preferential and stuff. Um, you've got a metal pen, you've got really different kinds of resin and plastic in, in this um, group here. But I would say that the, the plastic of this pen definitely feels nicer than something like this. This feels kind of like toy plastic, <laughs> which I mean, it makes sense. It's kind of a kid's pen. And um, I like the, the matte feel to it. That kind of helps it to feel a little bit nicer, kind of like this. I like the matte finish on the Safaris, but the matte finished Safari definitely feels nicer than this to me. Not by a lot necessarily, but I, I would still pick this one as far as the material goes. Um, probably the same for these as well. Um, but that makes sense because these are more expensive than this one. And for the price, I, I think this one feels fine. It feels like a good pen. So yeah, and it's a light cap, so it's not super back heavy or anything like that compared to these other pens. Well, actually the swipe is not back heavy either. Um, but these other pens, the Metropolitan, Safari, and especially the Eco, they're pretty back weighted if you cap them, post them, sorry. So I think that's about it. I will keep you updated on the nib situation with this one, see if I get that sorted out. And yeah, hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye.